Bethany Ray, and I am a teaching artist with Meadow Arts, a nonprofit art organization located in Twisp, Washington. And today, for Valentine's Day, we are going to make these little Valentine's Day cards focusing on positive and negative space as well as analogous colors. So what you're going to need for this art project is some watercolors, uh, water, um, crayons, blue painter's tape, and watercolor paper. So go ahead and pause the video, get all those materials out in front of you, and when you do have those materials out in front of you, go ahead and press play. So before we get started on our project, uh, let's talk about positive and negative space plus analogous colors. So positive space is the space that something like my hand occupies. So it's the space inside of my hand. That's positive space. Negative space is the space around my hand. So when we do our art project, we're going to be thinking about covering the negative space with color so then the positive space of the letters show up. So that's positive and negative space. We're also going to be using analogous colors. Analogous colors, so here's a color wheel. A color wheel is something that an artist will use when trying to figure out what colors to use. And analogous colors on the color wheel are the three, the three colors or four colors that sit next to each other. So the colors that I'm using is red, red, violet, and violet. So I'm going to use these three colors that are analogous. You're welcome to, if you need to, pause the video just so you can look at this a little bit longer and choose your colors. That's fine, but you want to choose three to four colors that are sitting next to each other on the color wheel. You can choose something totally different if you don't want to choose the same colors that I'm doing. So you might want to pause the video and figure out your colors. Um, so if you have a bunch of crayons in front of you, go ahead and choose which crayons you want and then we can get started on the next step. Okay, with your watercolor paper, uh, you are going to fold it in half, just like this, okay, because we're going to be using it vertically positioned. So go ahead and cut down a piece of watercolor paper and then fold it in half. So the first step of this is to form our letters. So with the blue painter's tape, we're just going to rip off little strips. You can use scissors if you want, if you want to have some really nice clean edges, but I wouldn't worry about that too much. So you're just going to rip off little strips, and we're working with some straight lines here to do so. And you want to also make sure that all the edges are rubbed down. Um, so that they stick to the paper. You don't want any of these edges to be loose because you don't want that watercolor to go underneath them. So after you put the little strip of tape down, just rub it with your finger. Make sure your hands are clean too because you don't want to be, like if you've been snacking, you don't want to rub any of that on the watercolor paper. Okay, and I'm just going to go around and with the O, it's not going to be a, a perfect circle, okay? Kind of making like a rectangle shape, really. Okay, so we got our O. And as you can see, it doesn't really matter, these little edges. It's not going to be, it's not going to be perfect, and that's okay. It's okay for things to not be perfect. Working on my V. V is just going to be two strips of tape. Okay. And then with the E, I'm going to go ahead and put down the left side of the E first and then build off of that. So we got a vertical line and then we're going to do some horizontal lines. Okay. So one, two, and then we'll have three lines. Okay. So I went pretty quickly there. Um, I understand if you need some extra time to really um, be able to do this and do it well. Um, so feel free to pause the video at this point and um, go ahead and get all your letters taped on. And then you can press, the, press play once you've done that.
Good job, guys, um, getting your tape on the paper. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use those analogous colors with our crayons. Um, I'm going to draw little hearts here like I've done on my example. You're welcome to, you know, you can maybe do stripes. Actually, yeah, that's what I'm going to do with this one. I'm going to do stripes. And I'm going to come up with, like, maybe a pattern. So let's just do some purple, some purple crayon all the way across. So the design is really up to you. If you want to do circles, if you want to do hearts, let me get this out of the way. There we go. Okay, go all the way across like that. Remember, analogous colors are three to four colors that sit next to each other on the color wheel. So I just did um, violet there, and now I have this kind of like a, almost like a red violet here. I'm going to put in between. Okay. If you get the idea of what to do, you're welcome again to pause the video and go ahead and add in your design. Okay, I'm going to at least get three of these colors in there though. So let me go back in. Oh, here we go. This one's kind of more of like a pink. So where do I want to fit this one? I'm running out of space. There we go. Okay. All right, I'm going to add it right there. Okay. All right, great. Good job on coloring your design. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some watercolor. Um, we're going to still work with analogous colors. So um, I am going to choose red and purple to combine with my design here. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you use a lot of water in order for that crayon to show through. So this is called a crayon resist, um, when the crayon kind of pushes back on the watercolor and doesn't allow it to cover it up. So I'm going to get my brush pretty wet, and then I'm going to swish it around in the red. And again, making sure I have lots of water. And then I'm just going to spread the watercolor kind of throughout the whole Hard. Okay. And if you want, while the watercolor is still wet, you can do another watercolor technique called wet on wet. So I'm going to grab some purple and just kind of incorporate that in there. But I want it to be transparent, right? See through. So I'm going to add some more water. So if you're noticing that your watercolor is getting kind of dark, you can add some more water to it. Okay. Go. It's kind of nice with that wet on wet. It's kind of this like nice little transition that's happening between the colors. I'm going to go back into red, kind of finish it up with that right at the bottom. Okay. There we go. So once you have the whole card covered, the front of it, um, you're going to want to just put it somewhere to dry and I will show you the next step after it's all dry. Okay, so now that you've let the um, watercolor paper dry, the next thing you're going to want to do is peel off the tape. Um, you're going to want to figure out what tape is on top and start there. So I see that this piece of tape is right on top. So I'm going to grab the corner of that and peel carefully. Don't rush this because um, it should peel off just fine, but sometimes if you pull too hard, it might have a tendency to tear. Also, um, if you're worried about it tearing, pull it at an angle. So you're kind of pulling it away here. So from the center, pulling it out. Okay. All right. And what you'll see happening is that the space that I taped is blank. So we have a very clear idea of the positive space of the letters. Okay. And then of course we have the negative space around the letters which we decorated. Okay. And you can just throw away the tape and now you got this fun little Valentine's Day card. 
All right, I hope you enjoyed making uh, this little Valentine's Day card with me where we learned about positive space, so the space that's inside of our letters, and negative space, the space that are, is outside of the letters. So again, positive space, just like my hand, it's the space inside my hand, and negative space is the space around my hand. And analogous colors, so three to four colors that sit next to each other on the color wheel. All right, have a nice Valentine's Day, and I look forward to the next time that we create something together. Bye for now.